Welcome back, everyone, to Halloween Haunts 365.com, the podcast. I'm Jared. And I'm Terry. Did I screw that up? No. Okay, good. <laughs> well, we got a fun interview tonight. We're going to interview May from Bloodshed Farms, and she has a hell of a history in the haunted industry. But first, we're going to play our video so you can buy some of our masterpieces. <laughs> So we will bring out May right here. How are you doing tonight? Hello, I'm doing just fine. Very cool, very cool. Is it hot enough yet? Are you done with the heat? Uh, yeah, always. Like if I can be like below 60 degrees all year round, that'd be ideal. <laughs> Amen to that woman. <laughs> I was telling you earlier, I was going to blow up the sun, right? Yes. Yeah, get on that, please. I'm, I'm done with it. We were supposed to have a nice rain shower. It was supposed to cool everything down to like 72. But at 4 o'clock, the sun told me to go fuck myself. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like something the sun would say. Yeah, I'm out there. It's, it was the hottest it's ever been I today. Think it rained up North Jersey. I don't care about North Jersey. I don't live there. <laughs> All right. So, May, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, I'm May. I have been working at haunted houses for over 15 years now. Uh, I've also been involved with paranormal research, um, pretty much all things creepy and horror related. I've dabbled in it. Very cool. <laughs> Us too. Yeah. I see that. <laughs> Oh, man. All right. So you told us how long you've been a haunter. Tell us how that journey started for you. Um, it was just the local prison museum in Mount Holly was looking for volunteers. So I was like, yeah, sure. I'm free weekends in on October. So I used to really enjoy scaring people at theme parks. Like, um, I would pretend to be really scared of roller coasters and my friends would pretend to drag me on to the roller coaster while I was going on. So everyone else around me is like really concerned for me. Like, is, is she okay? And then I get on the ride. I'm having a great time. But I just, I just love messing with people. <laughs> that's great. Yeah, I think so that's. Have you ever been to Six Flags where they do the, um, the Houdini ride? Oh yeah. Yes. When you're in like that first room, there's a scene where they they drop the light real fast, and it's, mm -hmm. you know, you know it's coming. It doesn't really have like any kind of scare to it, but I, I knew it was coming, and I decided as soon as it hit, I was gonna scream bloody murder. And everyone else around me jumps and screams. It's like, what are we scared of? And it's, it's just me. Just. <laughs> <laughs> That's evil, and I love it. Um, what other? So you started at the prison. Mm -hmm. Was that under Jim and Clark at that time, or was that before they had that? No, Jim and Clark. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then, where else have you worked? Um, haunt wise, I, yes. I did do a year at Eastern State Penitentiary as well for their, um, the terror behind the walls. And I think we were there that year in 2016. Yeah. yeah. 2016. Yes. You guys do the upgraded hex challenge? Of course. <laughs> so do you remember the nurse in the infirmary? No. Uh, <laughs> I don't. It was I, all I feel so bad because we go to so many all year yeah. that like the one I had a girl reach out about Frightland last night I was talking to her on Instagram she found us on Reddit and she because she was making fun of me that I didn't put uh the devil's playground on that list I made the other day I'm like it's not a done list I was really just a test I was fucking around to see what it would look like so she went on to tell ask me if I remembered her on the hayride in Frightland in 2015 I'm like I've been on probably 300 hayrides since 2015. I'm sorry. I'm sure you were great, but no, I don't remember. <laughs> don't, don't feel bad. There are people that I've acted with for probably a decade now that if I saw them out of costume, I wouldn't know who they were. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. I, probably, I couldn't tell you everybody's first name because <laughs> you get to know people that you're working with as their haunt character and you only ever see them in October. So if I ran into them at like the Wawa, 
I might recognize them. I'm an awful, I'm an awful person. I'm really bad with faces <laughs> and names. So you throw makeup and characters into it. Yeah. That's who you are. We first met Grin in 2015, I think it was, when we went to Bloodshed. It was I, one of yes. their first years open. It was when it was actual Bloodshed Fear Fest. And uh, I talked to Grin. It was the first time meeting him. And he didn't <laughs> have any makeup on. Well, that was the last time I saw him without makeup for like six years that I completely forgot what he looked like when I friended him on Facebook. (laughs) (laughs) Just because I got so used to like the Instagram and seeing him at the haunts with the prosthetics on. He's a character whether he's in costume or not. Oh, I know. He's he's a damn mess. (laughs) He's great. Uh, He's been on the show too. I don't know if you've seen that. No, I haven't seen that one yet. Yeah, he's, he's on there. Do you keep the same character alive every year or do you start oh, a new one? It's always something new. It's always because we always have new scenes and everybody gets moved around. So I usually just like to fill in wherever they need somebody. Gotcha. And now last year you were in the drive through as a victim, <laughs> correct? I was. I remember. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys come through with the upgraded puck? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Did I get in your car? I think you did and freaked out my... <laughs> I think you freaked out my uh, little 10-year-old. I'm not sorry. No, oh, me neither. <laughs> hey, scream. No, no, no. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> some people had no idea what to do when I got in the car. Like, some people loved it. They're like, oh, my gosh. Like, this is, this is how you break a fourth wall. Um, yeah. And other people were like, get out. Like, I'm not joking. <laughs> like, what's the safe word? You're done. Get out. And I was like... I think it depends on where people come from because, like, yeah. I'm from the more ghetto area. So, if someone gets in my car, it's like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you definitely got in. I think Grin ripped open my kid's door, too. But, like, I was also covered in blood and, like, something about me as, a, as an actor every season, this is, this is gross. I don't wash my costume for the season because it it holds all of your haunt funk in there and i I honestly believe if i was to wash it i wouldn't be able to act like you would lose all of the all of the momentum so So by the end of the season you stink it's just it's you it's just you accumulate all of that haunt funk and and that's what i was wearing i get in people's cars with that and i was covered in blood and like dirt from the cornfield like, I'm so sorry to anyone's car that I might have, like, ruined the upholstery in. I tried to be very careful. They're all fine. Yeah. If, yeah. if, they, fine. if they're complaining, they just like to complain. <laughs> oh, but yeah, I remember that. And then a very large man held my hand for, like, ten minutes through uh, bamboo reeds. <laughs> it was just long enough to be, all right, I'm kind of done, bro. <laughs> um... So, I can't say tell us about the character you play, because you play a ton. What has been your favorite character? Well, something, maybe something different than a favorite character. One of the, my favorite ways to scare people is an unexpected way. So, there was a season where I didn't actually have a costume certain nights. I would show up in, like, jeans and a t-shirt. And I would actually get a ticket from a manager and they, I would get thrown in line with the guests and I'd be in line with you. I'd be talking with you. I'd be like, oh, my, my boyfriend was so scared and he left me and I have to go through this alone. I'm just going to join your group. And they'd be like, yeah. And we talk about school and context, whatever. And I'm in line with them the whole time they're waiting. And then when we get into the attraction, all of the actors know I'm they know who I am. They know what I'm doing. So actors were given permission to like murder me in whatever way they see fit. So <laughs> that was always fun being like a plant that people don't expect because you're in line with them the whole time. And then all of a sudden actors grabbing you, ripping you out and throwing you out like an exit door. Uh, <laughs> That's awesome. That is great. There was, there was one bit that we did because our, our managers are just mad geniuses. And I'm pretty sure this is this is Clark's ingenuity in, ingenuity here, where he, I was in a room, and it was just me wearing regular clothes, and I'm frantically searching for something. So when they enter, that's that's what they see. They see a girl that's just looking very lost. And as soon as they come in, I'm like, "Can you can you please help me? I got separated from my group. I I lost my cell phone. I'm trying to find it." And I had 
little old ladies on their hands and knees in the rain and the mud, helping me search for this lost cell phone. And <laughs> we had we had it planted. It was right in front of like this one area. And as soon as I'd be like, oh, here it is. And that was the cue for the actor hiding behind a trap door to rip open the door, pick me up, throw me in there, slam it back shut, me screaming bloody murder because I just got abducted. And then the actor would go and scare them out of the room. But that's inventive. It, it, it works so well. It does work. Um, most most like groups that come through, I'd say maybe like it's 50-50 whether you're going to get a reaction out of them or any kind of like interaction at all. Um, with this one, I'd say 90, 95% of people were helping me look for that cell phone. So when I got grabbed and murdered, they believed it. Yeah. Um, to the point one guy actually bolted out of the exit door, ran outside and grabbed a security guard because he thought I was actually being murdered. <laughs> I actually had to bring the security guards in. Is everything okay? And they're like, oh, it's, that's May. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> That's, that's genius planning. I like it. it. <laughs> now I got a weird question about haunted attractions and you have enough history to really chime in on it. So the art of the haunt backstory, do you find them important in 2022? Personally? Yes. I, I love uh, every character I play, whether it has a name or not, if anybody's even going to know that name, I've got a fully fleshed out backstory of like my origins and I always find a way to tie it into whatever the overarching arc of the, the story is for the season. Um, but from what, I, what I've heard is that a lot of it is kind of lost on guests. A lot of guests don't get that story conveyed to them. So it's always going to be important to me in character building. Right. Are the guests ever going to appreciate it as much as I do? No. Probably not. Probably but that's not. What that's me. Because it has to be something that really started in the dawn of the internet because you'd be able to look up see the backstory of the haunt and go in and like now it's becoming even harder to find them on a website's the backstory and then it also like every year you're probably changing up attractions right so your story has to keep changing and evolving so you're always having to come up with a new new way to incorporate this into it yeah because we started seven years ago so the, eight years ago we went on our own little fun tour stopped at a ton of haunts but we read like each backstory and every haunt we went to had one now i mean i've been working on our schedule so i've been in and out of their websites maybe 25 percent have a backstory listed that's sad i know I, I like setting the scene and like kind of it makes it a little more immersive if you know what part of the story you're entering in frightland made so much more sense with the backstory because it explained why they had two blackout mazes, why the zombie prison was just the tunnel back when it was just the tunnel. I don't know if you've been to Frightland. Yeah. Well, last year they went all out on zombie prison. That's a brand new attraction now. That was <laughs> awesome. It was great. <clears throat> but their their story of Adalia and the manor and all his experiments really tied Frightland all together. And it, their backstory is still on, but a lot aren't. It's very weird. It's like a, it's like something that just died in the last five years. I think I don't know. The last couple of years, especially, I think everyone's just been maybe maybe a little stressed out with the you know goings on of the world. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> but I I would definitely love to see it come back. I think it's really important to just building the theme up. Yeah, it gives you something to do in the car. Because you could have someone reading the story while you're driving there. Adds excitement. That's what we yeah, did. Yeah, that's what we used to do. Yeah. Just, just something that popped into my head today when I was looking at all these uh, haunt websites. All right. So, see, I can't really ask you that question either. Why not? Because if you could change anything about your character, what would it be? Oh. But you're a different character every <laughs> Sorry. year. So... Is there a character you wish you had more time to improve on? That's how you make questions. Yeah, yeah. I I would like to play my my plague doctor um, lobotomy nurse again. Like that was the when I did the um, Hell's Gate Asylum back in twenty nineteen. Mm -hmm. That was the character that I had, and it was just 
that was just so much fun. Like I would run around with a measuring tape, measuring people's skulls to see if it would fit in the <laughs> jar that I had on my desk. And uh, I would do trans orbital lobotomies on everybody in, the, in line and had my assistant Mary that I would just scream at all the time, but she wasn't there, but I would just like scream at her mid sentence. And that was just, it was just so much fun to play. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So I bring that one back. I gotcha. Yeah, I, I like to see the return of all that stuff, the bloodshed, but I know what's going on and Yeah. I'm happy there's a drive through. Yeah, I, I would also very much like to return to the walkthrough hunt. Because it's just it's a totally different style of acting. It is. And yes. the, that midway was one of the best midways in all the haunts. Especially when you got the fog just yeah. right and it like yeah. eked out of the asylum and just covered the whole thing. Mm-hmm. We got in trouble with the police on Route 206 because we had too much fog one night. <laughs> it was causing traffic problems out on the highway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, anything they could find to complain about, I swear to God, these townships <laughs> and these haunts. Like, like the, you, you're a reason to come to Columbus Mart. Do they not understand that? Like, <laughs> nobody freely goes to Columbus Mart every weekend. I go maybe once every three years. <laughs> yeah, that's about right. And I'm a collector. So me not going just shows that, you know, you kind of need another draw out there. And it's not the damn rodeo. <laughs> I think it's. I think this has been a good location for us, too. It is. Yeah, I wish, everybody knows Columbus. Yeah, I wish they'd stop screwing with you. <laughs> yeah, same. I really wish we could just get back and I like our our management team, our builders. They have so many ideas, like probably more than we have like the time or budget or resources for. But like, I, I remember way. one room right off the bat, and that's hard for me to do. But I'll always remember bloodshed and the crutches room. Oh yes. Yeah. Oh my god. That was awesome. In the asylum, right? All the yep. crutches hanging yes. over the wall with the strobe lights and everything yep. going. Yeah. Or the the puzzles that you guys would put pretty much three quarters of the way through the uh, clownophobia and the mm-hmm. and Hellgate. Mm-hmm. It was uh, you had to figure out how the hell to get out. Yep. Like mm-hmm. I saw people legitimately freaked out by that. I was laughing at them, but they were legitimately freaked out about it. Well, in the in the clown house, we had a, a secret door. We could change the direction that you walked in. So you could think you made it to the exit, and then it would actually loop you back out to the entrance that you came in through. Um, and it had to be an actor that had to actually open that door to let you through. Otherwise, you would wander in a circle forever. Oh, yeah, I know. I did. <laughs> oh, yeah, we did. <laughs> yeah, we did. So that, was, that was fun for, like, the guests that were being... Not the nicest of people. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right, well, guess what? You're going to go back around two more times. But it, it was so great with the fog and the Mikey Myers running around <laughs> and the little movies playing and people smashing pumpkins. It was, even if you didn't get into one attraction, it was worth hanging out. Yeah, the Midway was, it was such quintessential Halloween. Yep. And that's what it felt like. It felt like Halloween. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Excuse me. All right, so we're going to take a little break from the Haunted Attractions, and we're going to delve into my second favorite thing, which is horror movies. Ooh. So what's your favorite scary movie? What did I pick one? Um, you know what? I actually really like Haunting in Connecticut. Okay. Uh, it, it's not the most, like, well-known. It's not really, I don't think it's anyone else's favorite. It just, it hit all the buttons for me. I just, I really liked everything they did with it. Like there's that one scene where there's like just bodies, spoiler alert, bodies just tumbling out of the wall. And it just, it, it was just good stuff. Yeah. And that was, yeah. A, that was a really good movie. I watched it again after doing all our homework on Ed and Lorraine. Cause that was mm-hmm. one of their cases. Yeah. Those, those lunatics. But, um, <laughs> and I think that's what added to it too, is that it was based on a true story. Yeah. And the, the, you know, the kid did have cancer. And the cancer did go away. I don't know if it came back, but it did go away. And just, they played it really good. Between the spirituality of the beginning to all the corpses flying out of the wall. Like you said, it's like, holy shit. It was just well done. I appreciated it. It was. That kid's a good actor, too. Yeah. Can't think of his name right now, but Emil Hirsch, I think, was it? 
I don't so like know I said, I'm real bad with names. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm going to get slammed on Instagram. That wasn't Emil Hirsch. <laughs> That's all right. What's your favorite horror franchise? Saw. That's... I saw all of the Saw movies, I think, in theaters, and then I would buy them as soon as they came out on DVD. Like, I was hook, line, and sinker for that franchise when it was, like, in its heyday. I haven't seen it now them like, years since I've seen the last movies, but... I'm running her through Friday the 13th right now, but I just, I lucked out at Best Buy. Best Buy, I I have to go to once a month because they always have some <laughs> crazy deal, especially now that they're trying to get get away from the physical media. I got all Saul's on Blu-ray and DVD for $13.99. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I was like, all right, that's going to be like 40 bucks. I don't think I'm in for 40 because you could stream everything. So I looked down, it said $13.99. I'm like, that's not Saul. I looked down at the OPC. I'm like, holy shit, that's Saul. You're coming home with me. <laughs> yeah, that phrase? Yeah. Yeah, I love all the box sets and everything. And what else did I find? Oh, I got all the Sons of Anarchy for like $25. That that's, that's a lot of like content. <laughs> I know. Nice. Like anytime I'm traveling and I'm there at Best Buy and I have time to kill, I'm in that Best Buy. <laughs> um... Favorite horror villain? Freddy Krueger. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, okay, let me look at right behind you. <laughs> um, I just, I love the, the dream walking. Yep. Because, like, dreams, like, sleep as a kid, that's, that's like, your safe spot. Like, I'm just going to go to sleep and when I wake up, it's going to be daylight, it's going to be safe. But to be vulnerable, like, in your sleep, like, nothing, there is no safe place for you. Yep. That's terrifying. Like, there's no escape from that, and it's... And he just doesn't walk up and hit you with a machete. He fucks with you. Yes! That's what I loved about Freddy. Yeah. Is he toyed with the little rats. Yes. Hmm. That was... I was really young. I must have been, like, four, maybe, and I I walked in, and the movie was playing in the living room, and I caught the scene with, like, the girl in the body bag in the high school. And to this day, like, that... That scene messes me up because yeah. <laughs> I, I just I saw I think I saw it just a little too young, but it stuck with me. Yep, good old Tina in the body bag, being dragged away in the pile of blood. Yep, mm -hmm. by no one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we know the answer to this question, but we're going to ask it anyway to lead in to more questions. As I'm choking on shit, do you believe in ghosts? So, do you know the answer to this question? Because Probably, apparently not. So, <laughs> apparently right. I don't. Um, I, I believe in the possibility of maybe ghost existing. Um, I like to remain very neutral because I do paranormal investigations and I go in with a very open mind and I like to um, rule out everything else like logically first before I can even consider a paranormal explanation for it. Okay. So, do maybe <laughs> uh, I have had things happen that I can't explain with any manner of rationality, but I'm still not a hundred percent convinced. I see. Okay. Um, what are some of the more popular places you visited as a paranormal investigator? Waverly Hills Sanatorium, nice down in Louisville. That was. I mean, that's, that's pinnacle for me. I don't think I'm like, I need to go back actually because of just all of the things that we experience there that I can't explain. I need to go back and like, see if I can recreate it and find some kind of explanation or see if something else happens because that was a crazy night. Yeah. We're going to have you back on. Cause I'm actually doing no, for real. I'm actually, okay. I've had a Waverly Hills show in the queue for like two months now. Mm -hmm. We okay. haven't, we haven't recorded it yet. So if I could throw you on while we're doing it to add shit that you've seen along the way, I think that'd make a cool show. No yeah, I'll dig up what I got. Yeah, let me know. That could be fun. Yeah, I'm, I'm just starting to get into it because like, like you, if I haven't seen what I've seen in my last house, I'd be on your boat. But there was just too much shit that I could not explain where I became a believer. Well, I am definitely going to want to hear more about that. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll tell you about that. 
We should actually just do our own show about that. That's what I keep saying. Like, I did one for the Horror 365 guys, the podcast. Mm -hmm. But uh, we need to do our own about it. Because I have the audios and shit, too. Just random fucking jerk off come through the EVP and stuff like Ooh. that. Yeah. No, do you still have access to that house? Could you get back to it? No. Oh. Does it have new owners? Yeah. <laughs> do you know if they're experiencing anything? I don't oh, know. No. But I know they gutted the whole house to redo oh. it. Yeah, they, they did a lot of work to it. We'll talk more about that after we <laughs> hang up. We'll get into that. I don't want to give up the whole story before making a whole show about it. So, what are some of the tools that you'll drag out for the paranormal investigation? I, honestly, I like to go in pretty pretty neutral minded first. So, I won't bring anything in initially, um, except for like a notebook. Um, I'll take notes. I'll talk to the people that have had experiences, and I'll have them walk me through where they were. I want to hear it firsthand. I want to see exactly what it was, and I want to like try and see if I can recreate it first. Um, I like to bring a lot of like not actual gadgets, but just everyday things. Like if there's a complaint of a, a draft, like I might bring uh, some some string and see if I can get that to move or like a balloon, see if the balloon's gonna float somewhere. Um, I'll bring like ball bearings, see if the floor is not flat, if they roll, um, a level. If, you're, if your complaint is that your, your cabinets are swinging open, well, is it level? Um, that's, I'm gonna bring in like everyday stuff to kind of, weed out any normal explanations first so you're the ghost hunter that i like rather yeah. <laughs> than we're gonna go and we're gonna prove ghosts are real look did you hear that i can't stand that shit no. <clears throat> I, mean, I have all the other toys too like i've, I've got the um the mel meter that's always a good one yeah see and now they're starting to use that xbox connect technology it's designed to find a shape of a person so even if it finds the shape of a person, it's doing what it was programmed to do. Yeah. So, so it's not a ghost. No, there's a little bit of bias involved there. So that's not yeah. <laughs> that's not credible finding. Right. It's literally if you took the Connect technology and disabled the Connect programming to look for things and then it popped up with that shit, okay. Maybe. We got something there. But like because every video you see now, they're using like light spectrums. If you can't see it, the light spectrum's not going to work because your eyes work by fucking light. <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> and I do like um, the idea of audio imaging, like creating like a three D image of um, like to try and pinpoint the source of an EVP. Yeah. Um. So you, if you like, can triangulate where maybe that source came from to concentrate readings on that area see if you can actually create like a like a digital readout of the room yeah yeah um, see maybe maybe something pops up that you can't see that but it's still reverberating the sound waves back right and all these guys walking in with the emf meters but they they're not designed to work to read us how's it going to read a fucking ghost what are they microwave people <laughs> see that's fair yeah, I never really, like, if you hold it up to yourself, you don't get any readings. Right. I guess the theory might be that, that they're manifesting or they're conduits of energy, so they're drawing more, so maybe it's more concentrated in that area, and you're picking up on fluctuations in energy. It may be. I mean, but, it could yeah. be. But that's one of the things I learned in that course about demonology was they will only run on this high if a ghost is producing this high of energy, it should be moving shit all over the place and you should be able to see it. So if the science goes that way, right? who knows? We'll never know. I also feel like all the, all the gadgets, all the science that's thrown in this, all of the, even like the amateur um, uh, paranormal investigators that have been out recently, why has no one found anything solid yet? And why is it all shot on a potato? <laughs> These guys have millions of dollars of funding, and I'm looking at shit from a cell phone that you bought, like a Nextel. Yeah. Like, well, what, what are you doing? How is this the best pick? Well, there's no light. I don't give a fuck. My cell phone does beautiful and no light. Yeah. yeah. And then, then you're going to start getting those distorted images that your brain is just naturally going to shape for you into something that makes sense, because that's how our brains work. They need to make sense of our surroundings. So then you get, like, 
the paradol the pareidolia effect. Right? That's the word I was looking. That's yeah. the word I was looking <laughs> for. Because there's electronic pareidolia, which fools those connect things. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, she's doing what I want to do. Like I want to go see what's up, but right. I'm not believing every stupid little thing I hear. And that's what those courses was really about. Like it, it taught about using the common sense thing first, and then eliminating all possibilities, and then how to exercise if you wanted to, and how to conjure if you wanted to. But wow. who knows? Yeah, everything, you have to rule out all of the possible first, and then what's left. And that's what they did when they came to our house. They did. Yep. They asked me what I was, what we saw, and then they tried to recreate stuff. Yep, they checked every electric outlet, they checked everything. Yeah, definitely gotta talk to you about that, I wanna hear those findings. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Alright, so... Um, what other popular places have you visited? Hmm. Uh, I mean, I've, I've gone to, like, Eastern State, like, through their history tours. I haven't actually done the, um, the investigations there. Uh, I did get to go to Alcatraz. I got to do, oh, wow. um, a tour of their, their medical ward, which was really cool. It wasn't, uh, specifically a paranormal event, but, like, I still, I had stuff with me, so. <laughs> 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 I'm seeking this shit in my book bag. We did. Honestly, I did a lot more um, like home haunts. Like I wanted to like help people. Um, so we were like just a, just a volunteer group and people would reach out if they were concerned. And I liked going in there and helping to alleviate their fears. So. Very, very cool. What is the some of the craziest evidence you have collected that made you... Waverly Hills, we did get um, some EVPs that were like direct responses to um, questions that we asked. And that was uh, the whole like context for for that scene was just bizarre. It, it started off with just a, an odd vibe and it just got weirder and weirder. And then when we got home and reviewed the evidence, like that was, it was clear as day responding to the question that we just asked. And uh, that whole night, just the whole... It's crazy. Like we, yeah. Like, have you have you been there? No, not yet. <laughs> Where? Wavery. No. Not so yet. like, it's there's no windows. It's all open air. Yeah. Um, and there was one floor we were on, and the whole team. There were five of us at the same time. We all felt like we couldn't breathe. Like we're standing in front of an open air window, and none of us could catch our breath. Like it felt like like there was just our our lungs tightened up, and I remember like weeks later, I, I got that feeling again. Like I was at work, I was just a regular day. And all of a sudden I felt like I was on the fourth floor at Waverly and I had to go like into a, like, a private room and like compose myself. And I texted one of my teammates and they replied with, I'm literally telling that story right now. So it was as they were telling that story and that experience to someone, I was miles away, like feeling it. Um, we had, I, I don't know if I believe something followed us home, but that's really the only way I can describe a lot of the things that happened afterwards. Like trying to even go over our evidence, like the TV turned on and started playing by itself. Um, in the middle of the night, the computer turned on and it started playing a song. It opened up a, a music playlist, started playing a song that was the last song we listened to before going into Waverly. Um, like, and then we had weird things with like, you would like, shit yourself. I'm getting the <laughs> chills. <laughs> like motion, motion sensor faucets didn't work for anyone on our team. Like w different, we all worked in different places, but like motion sensors weren't registering us. I'd walk past a computer and the computer would just shut down. Um, it was just bizarre things Sounds for like, like me. <laughs> about three weeks. I actually ended up having to go to, um, there was an occult store on South Street in Philly called Harry's Occult. And I actually had them make a like uh, a, a purification potion, like a like a absolving potion of protection, um, like a cleansing ritual. Because I, I don't know, like did something follow me home? Well, let's see if I can get rid of it this way. And when they handed it to me in the shop, um, I I couldn't hold it. I dropped it. 
And they all, it was like one of those movies where everybody like, like the record screeches and everybody stops and it's silent. Everybody looks at you. And I just, I, I pick it up and I go to walk out the door and I, I fumble it again. And at this point, the shopkeep actually picks it up. He walks me to the door, like has me go outside and then hands it to me and closes the door. Like, <laughs> like I don't know what kind of whatever. Uh, he's I like, you're fucked lady, like, get out of my store. Like, I don't want anything to do with this. Something's wrong with you. Take this and go. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Wow. Oh, oh man. <laughs> yeah that that's creepy so like was psychosomatic that i was i don't just a bunch of coincidences all at once but who knows that's a lot of fucking coincidences and that's that's like the tip of the iceberg i mean it, i mean it goes yeah yeah it was it was insane i gotcha yeah we'll, we'll get more into that after the, <laughs> after the air because i don't want to give up my shit on the microphone <laughs> All right, so let's take it back into the haunted attractions. Because I got some more pictures I got to post here. Um, would you want to start your own haunt? No. <laughs> she <laughs> answered that Oh, my way. God. <laughs> <laughs> no. I see the work that, like, our managers go through. They're exhausted all the time. Yeah, they are. No, it's, it's so, so much of an undertaking. Um, would I like to help contribute? to like running a haunt yeah absolutely um to be the sole no <laughs> like just legally like all of the different like paperwork and the um like the insurance that you have to have and all of the fees and fines and all the kids no i just want to work them on i just want to i just want to play <laughs> i gotcha wow it makes sense it's a lot it is so what do you do for a normal job when you're not haunting uh, I currently work at um, a warehouse. I'm a shift supervisor, so uh, there's no customers. I have like 15 plus years of just customer service experience. Um, I just started this job in January, and it's the first job I've ever had that I don't have direct interaction with customers. It's amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! I'm so, so jealous. <laughs> like, yeah, I wear jeans and a t-shirt to work. I don't have to deal with people. It's oh my gosh, it's beautiful. <laughs> Out for a new career here. <laughs> this is my from one of my favorite movies. This job would be great if it weren't for the fucking customers. Right? <laughs> I'll give you a dollar if you name that, that movie. That is so true. I'll give you a dollar <laughs> if you name that movie. <laughs> now hiring at Halloween Haunts 365.com, the podcast. <laughs> it's clerks, woman. Oh. <laughs> Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh my I'm God. very much looking forward to Clerks 3 as well. Me too. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I was so excited when I saw they were doing it. I that. saw that trailer. I almost lost my shit. You know there's a third clerks coming. I saw the trailer. Oh, I, I gotta watch with you. I don't know. <laughs> I I am very briefly in a commercial with Brian O'Halloran. Oh yeah. Um he was in a commercial for Bizarre AC. Okay. Um, and so a bunch of actual actors from the um the the prison. So like grin um yeah he was there for it. Like a bunch of a bunch of uh actors were all just involved in just we got to go to ac in clown costumes and just like fuck around like we were literally like on the back of a truck that was going through one of the the parking lots and we're just hanging on and there's it's like a regular day like there was a bridal expo going on that we crashed <laughs> we're just walking through the tropicana <laughs> it was a great time <laughs> Oh, I love haunters. They're my favorite people. <laughs> and this wasn't like October. I'm pretty sure this is like the middle of summer. So like there was no context for what we were doing there. Yeah. <laughs> well, middle of summer, you got that hard on. You're ready to go haunting. Right. So you gotta you gotta let the energy out. Like That's I'm sitting exactly, here, yeah. I'm making test videos because I'm so goddamn excited to just get out here. That's why I was so excited to have this interview. Like I get to talk about the haunt in July. Yes. <laughs> I know a lot of people are excited. I mean, a lot of people are really taking their fucking time with the schedules. <laughs> Not you guys though. Your new website's beautiful. I told Jim that earlier. I loved it. All right, so back to haunts. I don't have any more questions. 
Oh, you can think of shit. <laughs> it's been a long week. <sighs> it really has. And I have to deal with patients oh. and customers. So that's what's great about the working as, as an actor as well. So like when I was doing customer service, I used to go right from work and get right in character. And it was real difficult to remember where I was the next morning at work. Oh like, yeah. Can't, can't, can't get in say your that. You could be. I have to sit there and smile at you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Such a good stress reliever though, after working customer oh, service. Oh, I'm sure. <clears throat> I'm just going to scream at people real quick. See, I get a lot of one-on-one -on -one contact with my customers, so I usually end up just fucking with them. <laughs> so, I mean, and they'll call me, and she's seen me dead. I'm like, what did you do now? Because <laughs> I'll go install new machines and teach them how to use it, and then they'll call me with easy questions. I'm like, I taught you this. I gotta go. Yeah. So, <laughs> like, manual, I wrote it. 80% of them, I get to pick on them. And they laugh, so I don't have customers like I used to have customers. It's brutal. Yeah, I know. Anyway, back to the haunted attractions because that's what <laughs> we do here. Yeah. <laughs> um. So I know as an actor, you don't get to be able to go to a ton of haunts in the season. Well, working at Bloodshed, you kind of have September a little open. Do you have a favorite haunt outside of Bloodshed? Uh, I I really enjoy like the atmosphere of Penhurst. Um, and actually that was where, it was actually one of the first like real like big haunts that I got to go to after working at one. So I got to really appreciate it for what it was and what they're doing there. And it's actually where I had my first like scare at a haunt where an actor got me. So I was, I was going through with my boyfriend at the time and his arms were like around my shoulders behind me. His arms are around my shoulders and we're walking through the tunnels underneath and I can see his his shadow on the ground in front of me. And I, I turn around like, cause the shadow had this weird hat on. I was like, where did you get a weird hat? And it wasn't him. <laughs> and I have no idea how long I had been holding this other actor's hands on my shoulders for it. But like, I know it started out as my boyfriend's arms. That's and awesome. like, I, I don't know when that transition happens. Uh, and that's also one of the scares that I really like doing to actors or uh, to guests when they come through is I love to just hold their hand while they're walking through until they realize I'm not their friend. That's awesome. That is great. <laughs> yeah, me and that dude in the uh, bamboo reeds had a moment. He was just holding my hand as we drove along. I'm just chilling. My, my not, son Gavin's like, long, Daddy, is he holding your hand? I'm like, yeah. Like, that's weird. Man, it's haunting, buddy. You'll be fine. My two youngins are deathly afraid of it. Give them time. Oh, I've given them time. My older one watches horror. Like, we were just discussing American Psycho. Like, you can handle that, but we can't go through a two-minute attraction? No, because that's on a screen. So, it's not It's not immersive. You're I know. Not going through I, know. Right. I know. But it's all just a screen. <laughs> <laughs> actors are actors all but one all but one so Penhurst, have you been there in a while no I, it's actually been years since i've been there us too that's why i threw it back on the board for this season it i love it it's a good haunt it's just a real pain in the ass to get to Oh, I love that that creepy little drive up there, that little narrow stone. Oh, that's that's fine. Oh, that's so fun. <laughs> well, when that lock closes, they bust your ass in. Yeah. Do they? Yeah, yes. so you go to, like, some school, deal with a weird parking lot, then you got to sit on, like, a 15-minute bus. Do they do they entertain you on the bus ride? No. no. See, that's, what, that's where you have actors. Like, there, if you have a bus ride, it's, if that's how you're getting to your haunt, your haunt experience has started. Yep. So you need to have, like, that bus needs to be decked out and themed, and you are now, you are being shipped off to the asylum. Yeah, it was just a bunch of loud kids talking about <laughs> nonsense. Mm -hmm. But what are you going to do? I mean, they got to do what they got to do. That would be a cool idea. Yeah. Like she said. Well, they also have 600 acres. You can't fit more cars out there. <laughs> we just did a special on them. They got enough yeah, land. They got enough land. But they might not own all of it. They might have city restrictions. They might have landmark restrictions. Yeah, because it's the historic property. Uh, and, yeah. No, but I, I enjoyed the haunt. I, I don't remember much of it. And like walking up, too. We had to walk through the woods and you have to go through like that 
like that brick archway. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The courtyard. It's just the ambience of that. Like that's that's real good. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Any others you wanna think about that you liked or uh I've been up to Reapers once, Reapers Revenge, and like I I can't even that's amazing. <laughs> their, their hayride, what they do on that hayride. One of that was I don't want to spoil anything for anyone that hasn't been there, but um that's the second most scared I've ever been in all. Actually, no. Penners was the first time I was scared. But on Reapers, that was the most scared I've ever been at a haunt. Uh, and I don't want to spoil it, but it has to do with like some flashing lights. And it's, I just, oh, mm, yeah. just actors appearing in front of your face. And it was beautiful. The blackout room gets me. Pitch oh, black. Yeah. Pitch black. Pitch black. Yeah. yeah. It's so cool they can get away with that. We can't get away with that kind of stuff in Jersey. No. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. Yeah, I'm good for probably two a minute, and then I start my mind starts wandering and racing, and I'm like, I need to get out of here. That's that's the point of it. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm just like, do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not one of my favorites. Very cool, very cool. So we will be doing our fan voted haunt of the year again this year. You guys actually won last year. Yeah. I still have Jim's award over here. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, apparently, did I send you an invite for the barbecue yet? No. All right. Well, am I going to send her an invite for the barbecue then? Okay. <laughs> I know Jim's on a cruise. I've been trying to get Clark on Facebook. He just won't accept my friend requests, and I'm taking it personally now. He he uh, Facebook that often. Uh, I remember totally we had to kidding. like convince him to upload a, a profile picture. Like we had a whole petition to like trying to get him to make a duck face in the prison bathroom mirror. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I love Clark. Um, so I have Jim telling Clark to come to the barbecue, so I'll give it to Clark. It's been sitting here for a year. Because I was telling Jim I was holding it hostage so he could come record live with me, but he keeps dodging me. He's a busy guy. Don't. Yeah, I also yeah, I don't get to see him much either. <laughs> yeah, I just love picking on them. They're they're <laughs> awesome. Uh, what else we got? I don't have anything else. All right, so we'll wrap it up and we'll tell her our story. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna give you the floor. You can pimp out your social media if you want. If you take haunt pictures, whatever you want to do, the floor is yours. Oh, thank you. Um. I don't have any additional social media profiles. I literally only have a Facebook for myself. I don't even have Instagram, any of that. I, I, I missed the boat. Now I'm, I'm old now and I can't, I can't catch up with that nonsense. <laughs> oh, trust me. I mean, bloodshed's got it all. I, I personally, no, it's. If it wasn't, crazy. if it wasn't for this shit right here, yeah. I wouldn't have any of it because it's, it's just nonstop bullshit, but we'll get into that anyway. You got anything else, my love? No. No? <laughs> so we're going to wrap it up? We're going to wrap it up. All right. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. Thank you, guys. It was a pleasure. When we're done, I'm going to ask you what the hell a Kyber light is, because I've been looking at Ooh, that all night. I'll show you. Okay, cool. <laughs> well, that's all we have for you today at Halloween Haunts, 365.com, the podcast, where every day is haunt season. Goodbye. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.